What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Trick Tens. This is part six of Billy's Badass Boat Build. Man, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I feel like crap right now. I've got a flu or some type of cold or something and it's kicking my butt. I spent the entire day in the bed, but I just can't take it anymore. The show must go on, I've gotta do something. Um, I've done a little bit into this boat already since last episode. I'm gonna show y'all what I've got and what I plan to do it. And you know how this goes, I'll show you what's going on. That last video of the reveal of the Stratos, man, that thing looks so freaking good. If you guys haven't checked that video out, go check that one out. It's a video I posted right before this one. But um, yeah, so here we are now. It's about to be December 1st here. Thanksgiving was cool and now we're into December. December is always a whirlwind. I mean, you got the end of the year with business. Everybody wants all their stuff by the end of the year, trying to meet all their quotas, their last minute spending. So it's always crazy. Not to mention you have the holidays and all this stuff to buy for all your friends and family and kids and stuff like that. It's, it's a whole lot going on. On top of that, it's the end of striper fishing. It is my favorite fish to catch is rockfish. And after the first of the year, you cannot keep any striper. I've only kept one striper this season so far, and that sucks. Actually, I should say this winter season, because here in Virginia, we have a summer season and a winter season, or spring and fall, whatever however you want to look at it. But you're only allowed to keep one per person. That's how it's been for like the past two or three years. It sucks. It used to be two per person. Um, I'm going to hopefully get out there and do some striper fishing. Um, I'm going to try to take the entire week off between Christmas and New Year's and I'm gonna spend some time with the family and I'm gonna try to get out there at least two or three times and hit it hard on some fishing because like I said, it's my favorite type of fish. It really sucks that I'm feeling under the weather, but I guess that's how it is. I got three kids in three different schools. All these little booger pickers got their hands all over everything. So I guess I'm destined to get sick eventually. Usually I'm pretty tough, but it's been a rough year this year. I apologize, my voice is a little raspy during this video. I'm gonna do my best. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Let's get to work. All right, so you can see what I've got here. These are my pieces for the rod locker. Originally, I was gonna make these out of one piece, but the way it tapers and kicks, it's just, it's gonna be way too hard. It's gonna be too much of a pain in the ass. So this is how I'm gonna do this. It's gonna be pretty simple. I made this piece here. Um, I measured this, it's different, it tapers. This size is only five and a quarter. It comes up to seven over here. And it's got 11 inches or 10 inches on this side and 11 inches on the other side. So this piece I'm gonna take I'm gonna sleeve it up inside of this front channel that I made for the recessed rod locker. And this is made out of the same 040, so it's very lightweight and very pliable. I'll get this sucked tight in this corner right down here. I'll put a couple rivets in here, then I'll pull this side down and I'll put a rivet into the side rib up here. And I'll also shoot rivets here and here and down to the floor. Then I made another piece, it's very similar to that one. This one is just symmetrical, it's five and a quarter wide which is what the bottom of this rod locker is actually going to end up being. Take this one, same type of deal, sleeve it up inside of this one. Just like that. When I push this side down, it'll keep everything nice and streamlined. It's going to look good. Now on the back side of this piece, between this live well, we will have one inch closed cell foam. And I might even run that piece all the way up and just frame the inside of that or box the inside of that in into this front storage compartment. Now behind this piece inside here, I'm going to shove a bunch of foam. Um, it, it, I guess it will help with flotation, but if anything, it's more so just to keep down the noise and the vibration and rattling of this. The kicker to this, which is going to be a little bit of a pain in the ass, is I'm going to come back after I get these preset where I want them. I'm going to draw lines on here where they overlap with my marker. And I'm gonna have to take all this out. I'm gonna have to get this thing, you know, figured out. And if I can't install the carpet in here before I install this into the boat, I'm gonna probably have to make some templates. I think I'm gonna make like a big cardboard template. That way I can cut the carpet out because this part will be easy to get to, but up inside of here is gonna be a pain in the ass to try to carpet that thing. That's one thing I hate about doing rod lockers is getting up in there to carpet that is just really sucks. It's not gonna be fun at all. But from this point back, this should be pretty simple. I can just make this all out of one piece, insulate it with some foam, keep down on the noise, and it will make it a whole lot simpler. So once I get this whole rod locker right here completely finished, I'll be extremely happy because this thing just wrecks my brain. Each piece of the puzzle that goes into this thing is just a pain in the ass. 
So after I finish that up, I'm gonna move on to the other side. Let me show you what we got over there. All right, so this piece that I made right here that I showed you guys in the last episode, I actually had to cut it a little bit. I trimmed it down from a half inch to nothing on this side because it wasn't perfectly square. And that happens to me a lot. I make a lot of stuff twice. It's just the nature of the beast. But now it does fit in here and it allows me to have a square corner front and back, which even if it wasn't perfectly square, it's not the end of the world because I'm not dropping a hatch in here and you won't be able to tell much of a difference because this is going to have a side panel on it across here. It's going to taper down on an angle to my floor pan, but I got to get this piece figured out because I want to build my floor. That's going to be my next step of the game. My next stage, once I figure out this rod locker and stuff, I'm going to go ahead and put this floor in here. That way I can get in this boat and don't have to worry about standing on these stupid ass ribs and breaking my ankles or, you know, I have a place to sit and work when I'm in here. So I'm going to install some angles because I don't want to weld this in permanently yet because I don't know if this lip right here is the perfect angle and degree for what I need. I'm not going to know that until I get this floor figured out because I have to bend the same degree up on that floor and to keep it streamlined with this side panel. So what I'm going to do is install some angles. I'm going to cut a couple pieces of angles and put here and up on this front section right here. And they're going to be short so they can fit up inside of here and here and here. And I'm going to rivet those in. I'll drop them an eighth of an inch lower so that this piece will sit flush with the existing front and back deck. Eventually, I'm going to come back and weld this all solid. But I need those to hold this piece up here and stage it. Plus, with them in there, it'll even be stronger because I'm going to come back and shoot rivets down through here and countersink them. And it'll just make it a whole lot stronger. This is going to be an area where he's probably going to be stepping on, walking on. He's going to have all his rods up here. His... Uh, rear fish finder is probably going to swing off of this too. So I want this to be very strong. The other side, it's got the hatch in it. That's going to make it extremely strong by itself. But this side, it's not. It's going to be just this top piece right here that gives it all its strength. So I'm going to put those angles in and I'll set this piece up here. Then I'm going to measure for my floor and figure out how I'm going to do it because that side obviously is going to turn up at a 90. But the starboard side is not going to turn up at a 90. It's going to turn up on an angle like this. Now I'm going to make a little cardboard template and try to figure this out. But until I get this perfect, I'm not going to install this piece right here. I'm going to bend this floor at an angle so it comes right up here and it's all flush and streamlined across here. And if I have to adjust it, I can just take this out, take the floor out, take it to work and rebend it. So I'm going to get these angles installed so I can set this up here, take some good measurements for this floor, and then I'm going to try to get this floor piece in. Let's get back to work. So as you just saw in the last clip, I bent up this piece for the floor. This floor is made out of 0.125 aluminum. Now I built this like a pan on three sides. This front and this side over here are bent at a 90, but the starboard side is bent on like a 70 degree angle. And the reason for that is because it has to come streamlined with this side panel top gunnel piece. So I measured this thing outside measurements. You got to keep in mind when you bend stuff, you have to consider the thickness of your material. If you need an outside measurement, you're going to have to subtract the thickness of your material from each bend. So that makes the whole piece be an eighth of an inch smaller when you lay it off. Now I laid this thing off at an inch and five eighths on the sides. My original measurements was an inch and a half around the sides, but I knew that those were outside measurements. So we have an inch and five eighths lip on this front face and on that side and on this side over here. But this one is not kicked to a 90. I'm gonna drop this in here and see if it fits. It should be spot on because I took these measurements last night. And by the way, I'm feeling a lot better today. Still not 100%, but a whole hell of a lot better than yesterday. Let's drop this floor in here and see how it fits. Uh, 
Oh yeah. That was right on time. It's the same gunnel cat that we had. Just putting a straight line on here to make sure that this bin and this bin are going to line up perfectly. Let's see what we got on the opposite side. That's right on the money. That one needs to come to me a little bit. Same thing on this side. This is how I do all my floors especially when I'm doing a kick on a degree angle. And the only reason I didn't bring this one as far out as the other side is because I've already talked to Billy and like most people who drive a tiller, they sit on this side of the boat and they drive with their left hand. That's how I drive the boat. So this side needs to have more leg room because if I made it that far out, it's going to cut down on his leg room. But this is perfect because he's going to sit here and he'll have plenty of room for his legs to sit up inside of here. If he's fishing with a partner, more than likely his partner is going to be sitting on the front to help with the weight distribution and keep the boat on plane and going faster. This thing is extremely close. This is definitely going to work. Now this back bench seat right here, it kind of bubbles out. It's just because this is thin aluminum. It's like 80 gauge right here. So I'm going to have to squish this back before I attach this in. Before I permanently install this floor or this side piece, I'm gonna pull this stuff out. I'm gonna clean the bottom of this boat really good with the vacuum. Then I'm gonna put some closed cell foam in here. I'm gonna use like an inch and a half. I'm gonna cut some pieces that are the width of these ribs and the floor. And I'm gonna run a one piece solid all the way across. And in the middle of that, I'm gonna put a piece in there. It's probably only gonna be like 16 inches wide or somewhere in that range. And that's basically just gonna sandwich it and it's gonna keep the center of this strong even though with these bins on here, it probably doesn't need it, but I am gonna put it in there. It'll help with the sound dampening and it will add some flotation to the boat. So I'm gonna pull these pieces out of here. I'm gonna get this cleaned up. Tonight, we're gonna be listening to some J. Cole. I put on an hour long chill song on YouTube. If you guys wanna check out what I'm listening to, I don't really listen to a whole lot of this new hip hop and stuff. I just can't get down with the mumble rap and all this bullshit that's out there nowadays, but J. Cole is definitely one of the greatest up and coming new rappers. Like, I mean, I know he's been around for a while now, but most of the stuff I grew up on was like Jay-Z and Tupac, Biggie, Nas, stuff like that. J. Cole is one of the only new age rappers that I get down with. I'm also gonna be installing a piece of angle across this whole back bench seat right here. It's basically gonna sit from the floor up and towards the bow of the boat. I'm gonna rivet that through, and that's not only gonna suck this back straight across here, but it's also gonna give me a place to attach my floor going vertically down, because there's nothing sitting right here. This rib is like six inches away, and this thing needs to be supported right here. Now, I could have turned this floor pan down an inch or an inch and a half and had a lip on it to come back and shoot some rivets from the inside of this back bench seat, but I wasn't 100% sure of my measurements, and I just didn't feel confident enough to do it, because I was feeling like crap last night when I took those measurements. Now, looking back at it, I should have just done it because my measurements were spot on. But doing it this way is not that big of a deal and I have plenty of angle left over. I'm also going to be installing some grommets. This is like an inch and a half opening with an inch and three quarter hole size for the grommet. I install these in all of the boats and this is very important. I'm basically going to drill a hole up here. I'm gonna put one on the other side too and it's gonna run all the way up both sides of the boat. Now, regardless if I'm gonna run stuff on both sides of the boats or not, I put these in there. These things are cheap as crap. I think they're like 50 cents a piece, and it's definitely worth it because at a later date, if you wanna pull wires, you already have a hole and it's protected. Now, I'm gonna cut a hole up in here. I'm gonna sink one right here, and I'll do the same thing in the front deck. Same thing on both sides. I'll even put them in the back of this back deck. That way you'll have a hole in the back and the front where you can pull wires all the way through, run them all the way up into the front deck, pull them up through the trolling motor tray if you need to access something. This comes in very handy at a later date. I'm ready to get this thing going. Let's get back to work.
the floor installed. As you can see here, I ran four rivets across here, right across the ribs. One, two, and three, and then right here up against this angle that I put in here so I can support this floor. This thing is super strong. You see the foam I put in here? It runs tight, it's flush up against here. And in this middle section right here, I put like a 12 inch piece just to keep it up. And there's still a gap underneath there to let water run through so it'll drain properly. But what I'm gonna do up here in this front, this live well is still not attached yet. There's a one inch gap in here. I'm gonna run a piece of one by one square tube up here, probably like a 14 gauge wall. And I'll run probably one in the corner, maybe one in the middle and one in the corner over there. That'll support this front deck vertically. And it will also allow me to pack foam in between those pieces I put in here and wrap this entire live well with the closed cell foam. Now this hatch I have right here, this is not the original hatch I was planning on using here. I built this one for another well built that was going to drop into an extended deck that comes stock in the well built, but we decided to throw a foot pedal tray in there instead. So this one is going to work perfectly for this boat. It fits in there and it's a little bit longer than the original one I was going to use, but it's going to work out all right because when I open this hatch up on this side over here, I'm going to have all this electrical panel and switches and stuff. And then the back section, we have like a little pocket, just a little storage space for him to put his phone and stuff like that. And he'll have a charger over there so he can plug that stuff in. But the whole thing is really starting to come together. I'm getting hyped about this build. I got a couple more pieces to make. I'm going to bring a piece across here to flush this out and across the front. And I got to build a little piece here and in this back section. But then this entire front deck from the back bench seat up will be completely finished. Now I'm going to start framing out this back area right here for the rear hatch. And before you know it, this thing's going to be going off and getting painted. Let's get back to work. All right, so before I jump into the back rear hatch frame, I'm going to go ahead and show you what I did today. I bent this piece of 040 aluminum to finish off this rod locker. Now I was hoping that I could bend this in one piece and have a 10 inch side over here, but the material that I had left over of the sheet was not quite big enough. But this piece is going to fit in here just like this and flush everything off. Now this thing's gonna be sweet, it turned out perfectly. I'll come back and shoot rivets through here into the side ribs. It'll hold it in place perfectly. I'll have to come back and attach another piece from here up and I can shoot rivets through that three quarter lip that I put in there. And then I'll have another sheet on the outside that will finish off this whole side panel. Same thing with the face of this. After I get my pieces of tubing in here and my foam, I will have another sheet that frames this off and on the opposite side where the hatch is gonna be for all those electrical panels. Now, what I'm going to do is go ahead and install these one inch square tubes in here right now. So I need to get this thing figured out. I need to get this finalized. There's nothing holding this deck in place except for the rivets in the front and the welds in the back right here. So I want to finish this off and get these heights perfectly before I start installing this rod locker and this electrical panel on this side. Then I can move on to the back of the boat and finish framing off this large hatch. Let's get back to work. So as you just saw, I went ahead and installed these vertical supports in here. And we got three of these in here. These are basically going to keep this deck supported from any down pressure on it. Now these one inch square tubings, they actually run all the way to the floor rib and they run all the way up to the back side of this angle right here. So any of the weight that's pushed down here is going to be supported by this tube already. The extra welds in here and the rivets that are countersunk, this is just extra stuff to keep this thing to where it never has an issue. Now I counter something these rivets, 
they're basically invisible. I'm gonna run a sheet across here to finish this off like a face and the turf will run back. It'll run down here and back down the floor. Now the side panels, port and starboard, those are not gonna be turfed, those are gonna be painted. But anything on this top over here and on this other side, they're all gonna be turfed. This is very important. You don't wanna have any bubbles or ripples in here because this turf's gonna cover it and it'll hide a lot of stuff, but it only takes you a couple extra seconds to countersink these rivets in here. And the way I put these pieces in here for these vertical supports and welded them, they're basically invisible. You're not gonna see any of that because it's behind it. I put it behind this angle right here. So let's go ahead and move on to the back of this boat. I'm ready to get this thing wrapped up and finish up all this metal work. Let's get back to work. All right guys, so as you just saw, I went ahead and installed this framing for this back transom area. This is basically gonna house our big storage hatch right here. I mean, this is gonna have a gas tank on one side and the other side is just gonna be free game for whatever he wants to put in here. It's a big storage area. I still have to come back and put a floor in here and he's gonna have his iconic battery sitting in the center. He's gonna have a ton of storage on the port and starboard side of this boat. I mean, there's a lot of room in there. Those iconic batteries are very small. I'm probably gonna house his battery charger and tender back here or over there on one side i haven't figured that out yet but what i did on this back bench area is i came and installed this one and a half by one and a half one eighth inch aluminum angle and then i came off of that with some one by three by one sixteenth tubing on either side i cut them out of miter so i could weld them in solid and then i came back across here with another piece of this one and a half inch aluminum angle and this fits perfectly for the hatch to drop into. Now I do have to come back, I'm gonna add some more angle, you know, across here, and then across the face over here. I gotta have something to support this little piece of floor I gotta put over here. Cause the hatch is gonna drop in here, it's gonna come over an inch and a half. And then on this side, we're gonna have one piece of eighth inch aluminum. It's not very big, it's only like nine inches here, and it drops like 16 to 11 or something like that. So we got one piece here, and one piece here. And that's pretty much gonna finish off this entire back transom area. I am going to come back and I'm gonna install a piece of this angle right here. I'm gonna put a piece up in here like that. I'll probably weld it to the transom and weld it to this piece right here. And what that's gonna do is it's basically gonna close off this big gap. Now I left this gap in here because I need room to get in here. I gotta drop the hose for the gas tank and I gotta drop the power cable. I gotta drop the transducer coming in here. The cables have to run in here. Plus it's almost like a little splash well. Any of the water that runs through here will drop through here. But I don't want this thing to run the whole length. I mean, I could leave it like that, but it would look a whole lot sweeter if I just came off of here with a little angle kicked it up at a 45, brought it over and kicked it back at a 45. It'll look a whole lot more aggressive. And that way I can run this whole back deck and back bench seat all the way back flush to the transom. And it will all be turf from here all the way back. And you just have a little hole opening right here. And that's really all you need. It's gonna look sick. I could have put a piece of one by three tubing across here 
and it would have fit perfectly. But the issue with that is that I would have had to come back and drill a hole through it and then run all my wires and cables through that hole. It would have made it weaker. It's going to be a whole lot stronger this way, and it's going to be sick. Now, I've got all this metal work in here. I know a lot of you guys are looking at this like, holy crap, there's a lot of metal in there. Like, what is this? And it's hard for me to explain to you because some people can just see it, and some people just have to see the finished product. I'm one of those people that I'm already five steps ahead of where I'm at in my brain. And that's just how I work because I do this all the time. What I did tonight with putting this hatch frame in here, it allowed me to go ahead and figure out the piece that I need to cut over here, the piece I need to cut over here, here and here, and also up here and here. I've already had all this figured out. I really don't have that much more metal work that I have to physically do in the boat. The other stuff is just pieces I gotta cut. They're rivet down into the front deck and the back deck and it's just going to finish this thing off and make everything streamlined this is going to allow me to finish up the rest of the metal work i have to do in here within a couple of hours and this boat will be ready to go off to billy and get him to paint this whole thing and when it comes back to me i'll be ready to install this entire deck all the hatches do all the electrical and plumbing and get this thing ready to roll i'm hyped about this build this thing is going to be sick I mean, this is probably my finest work. It's just going to be right up there with Neptune. This is going to be one badass boat build. I got to take some measurements tonight. I'm going to get all this stuff figured out. Let's get back to work. Check this thing out, man. It looks so good. You can really get a good idea and a good feel for what this thing's gonna look like once it gets completely finished and turf now. That's pretty much all the metal that's going in here. Got a couple more little small pieces to put in, but that finishes off the entire front deck besides the trolling motor mount. Good size deck. Good floor space. I really am digging the way this rod locker is set up. It's, it's asymmetrical, you know, everything I like to keep symmetrical, but I do like the look of this. It's going to be cool once the turf is in here. It's definitely different. And I think it's cool that this one is sloped like that because it'll give you some more leg room when you sit here. And I don't think it would have been enough leg room if I brought it all the way out to here. It would have been awkward. It would have been kind of hard to sit up there, at least for me. I mean, Billy's a pretty tall guy too, but, you know, I'm like 6'6", six, six, so I need the leg room. I have to put a couple more pieces back here still, but I made what I could. I think it looks sick though. That back deck is just really cool. I mean, I just put as big a hatches as I could into that whole thing. This really turned out great. Got a lot of room on that front deck too. I still gotta install the pieces inside of here, but you can see how it's gonna work. Man, that purple is so sharp. God, it was beautiful. I'm digging it. All right, so I hate to do it, but I'm gonna have to call this video here. I mean, it's getting kind of long. I'm pushing that 30 minute mark, and we've covered a lot of ground in this episode. So 
I'm going to start working on the internals for all of these patches, all the bottoms and floors and pans and stuff like that. I'm going to finalize all that up. I still got to get the live well drain completely welded from the bottom of the hall. I'm going to try to get up with Billy and get him to paint this thing because I want to get that done. That way I can just start doing all the electrical and turf and you know LEDs and all that good stuff. I've got a lot going on right now. I mean, not only at work being the end of the year and stuff, but also, you know, I'm doing this at night. I'm editing videos and I just picked up a coaching gig for basketball for my son. And my other son is also playing basketball. So we're going to basketball practice four nights a week. Two of those nights I'm coaching and we're going to start having games on Saturdays. Now I have spoiled you guys because I've been grinding hard and I've been dropping two videos a week for like the past six, maybe five months at least, something like that. But I'm going to have to cut it back to one. I just don't have enough hours in the day. I know a lot about basketball. It was my first love. And to see my kids getting old enough to be in that competitive league play and really enjoy it, it makes me happy and it makes me want to give back. So I'm going to be putting a lot of time into that coaching stuff. And I'm excited about it. All right, so I did want to tell you all one other thing real quick before we get done with this video. Um, I hooked up with a buddy of mine named Bucky. He has a YouTube channel called Triways. It's T-R-I-W-A-V-E-S. I'll leave a link in the description of this video. I've known this dude for probably like 20 years. I haven't seen him in like at least eight or nine years, but we used to ball it up. It made me think about it when uh, I was thinking about basketball. And we ended up getting out on the river, doing some fishing. We caught a bunch of trout. They were small. It was like Dink City out there, but it was good to get up with him and catch up with him. And he's grinding. He's really chasing a dream with this YouTube thing. And he's just a genuinely good person and a hell of a fisherman. So I told him that I'll try to help him out. I'm trying to get him to a thousand subscribers. He's got like 800 and some change right now. But I know that a couple hundred of you guys are into fishing. Go check him out. He's got some cool videos. And I think y'all like it. So go over to his channel and subscribe to that. If y'all can help him, I'd appreciate that. And I also appreciate you guys watching this video, especially if you're still sticking around because a lot of my viewers don't make it to the end of the videos. I still got a decent amount of stuff left to do on this boat and it's not gonna build itself. But this thing is looking sick. In the words of the late, great Mac Miller, this boat is most dope. I appreciate you guys watching. Hit that like, subscribe button, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this build, about what I'm doing, the videos. If you hate me, if you think I suck, if you think I'm good, I don't care. Any feedback is good feedback and it helps me grow. I'll see you guys next time. I got to get back to work.